taken same away bands. this time around. LeBlanc and Elise, like you say, same bands as game one. Will we see Shivana sneaking through once again? Will we see anything, anything that COG can take away from this one? Karma wow. ban. I don't think I'd ever say that. I, I don't think that was, I don't honestly think that's worthy of a ban. I mean, Anton, so he did a good job top, but he kept farming, but it was just like the grouping that Fnatic did was too early for COG to handle the slows into a spear, just like you're saying. It was just too much. But to waste a ban on it, to use a ban on it, I mean, they could just play something else that would counter it. So, well, Nidalee is the final band, so Mr. Shivana, Annie available as well. Will they go for Annie pick straight away here? What will Aframu maybe take of that one? You can see the focus on the end's face, bit of concentration in-game chat between them. Discussion exactly what that first pick would be. What would you go with? I mean, Lucian's out there, you've got Sh I think Shivana Sh out yeah. there, you've got Shivana's Annie. right up his alley, though. I mean, it's a tanky top laner, even does quite a bit of damage. But Annie, I mean... I don't know. I, I don't know if Yosho's been playing any. He played a lot of Sona back in the uh, summer split. There's so many things you can pick from, but looks like they will go for Shivana. Yep. And the end wins out. He's like, it's my pick. I don't care what you guys say. I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we, we've seen already in this tournament alone. I mean, Sada, she's in the jungle, did a fantastic job of moving around, really punishing tricks. We've seen it used in the top lane quite a few times. It's just so hard to deal with. You're so fast. And if you're in the top lane, you get so much more farm that you can really track down an AD carry and kill them a lot quicker. Well, the choices for Fnatic. They pulled out a bit of a surprise in game one. A surprise for pretty much everyone watching and as well as COG, mm. honestly. I think they were quite expecting the, uh, the steam train that just came over them. Lee Sin available for Cyanide. Does he go with that one? Vi also out there as well, whether he wants to lock that in. That used to be one of his champions of choice. That obviously, tricks took away from him in game one. Didn't work out too well for him. Is he thinking this is going to be a bit of a speed farming run that he's required? Oriana this early on? Oh, well, it is. They're going with the gamut thing that they were doing. That we're in an ultimate pull them all together. Annie's stunned right after that. And if any man's capable of doing it, Yellow Star is. We've seen his flash crescendo so many times. And this Annie's just going to be even more powerful for him. But how are Steelers going to react to this? Because we, I think we heard after we were talking about yesterday during an interview with Shocks, the, the triangle of supports right now. And it's, it's Lulu, Annie, and Thresh, if I don't remember correctly. So he knows exactly what, I, what he wants to pick into it, but do they want to lean against each other is the real question. And this, this big man phase has started to move to like Worlds was. Worlds became essentially, you're going to have to first pick the mid because the mids were the so important thing. And again, we're starting to see that, whereas that you think back to Europe and NA, the last pit choice was always that mid laner. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because they wanted to always do the cast and encounter the pick counters, kind of thing. Yeah. And they're not caring too much about it. I mean, we even heard Alex talk about, yeah, Oriana versus Riven. It's, it's very bad for Oriana, but as long as he just held on in lane and got to the team fights, it worked out very well. Link, he went 8 0 and 4 on that Ziggs yesterday. Mm. He's going to lock it in again. So that gives him some global presence. It gives you, him if you remember yesterday, Alex in the interview said, I, I think Ziggs is actually a really strong counter to Oriana if played well. I just didn't play it well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really didn't that game. But yeah, so Link, he's already proven himself on, on Ziggs before. He has the ability to pull someone to him or to escape, which is really big to have in a mid lane. Great. Okay. This is, this is, this is the great thing of having Krupo here that I can talk to. He said, any pick, I really don't think he's that strong because you can counter it so hard with Leona. Yeah. Aframu goes Leona. You got to go all in is what he said with it. Mm. And it looks like when we do see the AD carry picked up, they're going to be going for a because he's going to play it safe. He's going to go for something that has some sort of escape as he's hovering over Ezreal here. But CLG, you think they're going to go with Jinx again? That's what I'm, I'm like. You, you mentioned before, Douglas says Jinx is the way to go. She's the AD carry to pick up. His Jinx wasn't that convincing in that last game. I'm surprised he's still not going with Vayne after following that game. Just, just to, just to rub his nose in it. It's about like a naughty dog you're trying to tell off. <laughs> but uh, instead, it is going to be Lee Sin and Ezreal in there. So will we see Jinx once again from Double Lift? I expect we will. Although then again, actually with Leona, maybe not. Maybe they're going to have to change it going by the support he's with. Maybe Lucian, because they have a way to really quickly follow up. We did see him play yesterday. But their whole composition, it, it really doesn't have synergy just yet. The Leona and the Ziggs does, obviously, with the stacking ultimates, but they still need potentially a top laner, potentially a jungler. Well, they still Shivana, need to carry. Shivana works with Leona because you can put, throw out that uh, Sun of Earth. I can never remember the damn name of the ultimate. Solar Flare. Solar Flare, that's the one. And Thank then he's just going to dive on top of it. Solar Flare it is here. Uh, quick Shot is in the building as he well. Is. So, uh, he, you know, he'll be reprimanding me later for forgetting that one. But. Uh, <laughs> 
Maybe just saying you're going to have to grow your beard out like I have. Uh, or just get a scraggly mess like he has. Lucian could well be the choice for him. It will be. And Renekton. That means it is going to be Shivana in the jungle. Which actually was Cyanide picking correctly. Realizing he needed a bit of speed in that jungle. No. Good lord. Don't have Yorikin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people even want to play him in the all for, or one for all uh, game mode that's out right now. But I, I love having conversations with Soaz about Yorik. He's like, Yorik. It is, there's nothing wrong with Yorik. And it's like, no, really. Really. Don't play it. Please. Cannon Slightly would work. racist. <laughs> it's not racist. It's just simply no, actually, about that, that is how he talks. That is how he talks. That is, how he that talks. is his English. It's, uh, whoa, they can turn it back around and pull a, a Vlad themselves in that top lane. You know, the, uh, look at just look how much they can go through. This is the this is the champion pool that so as is available to him. Effectively going through every champion in League of Legends, 110, just flicking through them. But uh, actually, it's more than 110 now. But. Uh, who knows these days? I can't keep count. We do we do ban champions out as well. So we, uh, yeah, well we do. Forgive have... me for not exactly knowing the exact number right now. Yeah, it's understandable. But that cannon wouldn't be a bad pickup. They're a little heavy AP oriented, but the Oriana ultimate mixed in with the anti stun, it means they can sit there in your cannon ultimate the, pretty much the entire time, and that's a lot of damage. Mm. That's that's a, that's a scary layered combo if they can land it, and it's always a big if they can land it. Kennen's definitely going to be looking to get in there, so possibly throwing the ball on him or on Lee Sin just to start that yeah. whole combo off. It's it's very kind of reminiscent of what Gambit went earlier mm -hmm. when they had the, the entire CC comp against Cloud Nine. They wanted to, they had many different forms of it. This is kind of the same thing here, but they have Leona to kind of potentially stop and engage, but they don't have a great disengage. That's the problem. Like, you only obviously can Solar Fair to keep them away, but that's it. Like, what else are you going to use? Maybe the slow out of Ziggs, maybe the Sun of Renekton, but then you're in melee range, obviously. So it's going to be very tough for CLG to run away from a fight. So if anything, they need to be the ones really orchestrating this. Well, we'll see how it works out, ladies and gentlemen. Fnatic are 1-0 up already in the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne semi-finals. Gambit! They're through to the finals. If you missed that game earlier on, well, you should have got up earlier, frankly, because those were two fantastic high-paced games, and Honestly, some of those team fights could have gone either way, but it was Gambit that came out on top 2-0. to zero. Yeah. And uh, you shouldn't read into that score thinking, oh, it was a stomp by Gambit, because those games were pretty close. They, they really were. I mean, in game two alone, Cloud9 won multiple team fights, so did Gambit, but it was just Gambit taking that little bit of an extra edge that took him through. Very close game. It was very exciting to watch and to cast. And even, you know, this first game being very one-sided, it was still a very crazy match. There was madness happening everywhere. Well, it was first blood level one to CLG. You thought, hello, here we go. After yeah. Mulan's the hook, Peke going down. Have they managed to find the kryptonite that is required to take down Fnatic? But it seems not. The Fnatic had an answer. Do CLG have an answer coming into game two? CLG are going to be on the blue team, and Fnatic will be on the red team. CLG have to win this game to keep themselves alive in this tournament. Well, they will be going home and really all the hopes and dreams of North America will be dashed along with them. And right now, are we going to see any level 1 action out of Xpeke again? Is he going to overextend or get in a bad spot? I'm not sure he's going to make it happen this time here, but Fnatic, they are one game up, so they have the ability to play a little bit more relaxed here. CLG, they have nothing to, to hold back from right now. They need to be able to win this one to stay in it. And we do see Soaz going with the Doran's Blade to start up with, which is a very smart pickup for him. And Fnatic, they have a four-man stack towards blue. It looks like they're expecting potentially something to be there, but Yellowstar, he has it stun ready. Uh-oh. Don't go a step too far, Trix. You're going to go straight into an Annie stun. And you will not be getting out of that one for sure. <laughs> what does realize I do? <laughs> He's going to have vision if he comes around that side area. Not a great deal of wards being expended, actually, so far from either team, but it is going to be going in. They do manage to land onto Trix. It goes in, follows it through. Lee Syndrome clicking in, didn't really know who was in that bush, just thought it was going to go anyway. They felt they had the realization, they get the vision, they put the ward down. Will they stick around for this Red Elvader or will they all back off? If Reckless is going to teleport back, that tells me they're going to be thinking of going to the top lane. So this could be 2v1 switches. Yeah, I, I see double ups. He's already down bottom, so he's already pretty much set in his ways right there. Fnatic not actually going to go for the red, so they're going to back away. It looks like take their own blue or maybe. With Annie still there, they're going to go towards his top side, maybe clear out some wards, even though they don't have a pink, but at least protect a uh, red buff here. As Sunite's still sticking with them, so it looks like they want to control this, even though it's warded. Well, we do see them all going up straight through that ward. That's going to give the position to CLG. They ping it straight away, and they know that they are all stacked around that red buff area. I think they also realize it's a 2v1, because Soaz shows himself down that bottom area, along with double lift. Red buff will be taken by Cyanide, so standard start for a lease in. Blue buff will be picked up by CLG as well, so 
No invades coming oh, wow. out this time around. Neon actually stayed close enough to get experience right there. So he's expected to be in this 1v2. He wants he's to be able hoping. to get something. Yeah, he's hoping. So Trick's actually not going to hit level 2 right off the blue. But Neon going to get a little bit more help in this top lane. Because then when they try to do that, that dive around that 230 mark, or sorry, 330 mark, he's going to be able to, to live. Yeah, that's realization. They knew they were in that 2v1 situation already. So he is just making sure he gets some pots in there as well. He's just teleporting back. What's he going to get himself? I guess another couple of stack of health pots will be it. Yep, indeed. And he's just going to return to that lane. Knows he's going to be all sat in the tower and he's happy to let them push it. CLG doing exactly the same thing, honestly. So as had uh, gone just backed himself off a little bit. He's happy to just stay at range. And honestly, it's very hard to stop a cannon farming. Yeah, it is. I mean, just because of the range alone, you have the shuriken for the extra attack on top of that. He's very hard to lock down when you have that lightning rush available, but both these solo laners are going to have a very tough time in Renekton against a stun. Then Ezra can follow up with quite a bit of damage. On the other side, if Luna does get some sort of way in there and a stun, he's going to be taking a lot himself. But Sana, he's going to be visiting this bottom lane. As you do see tricks. looks like he's going to go up the, uh, to the top for the same thing here. But right now, much slower game than we saw prior. Sino just helping out in this uh, bottom lane, making sure they don't stack up. We are approaching that four minute mark. Good trade from Lincoln towards Peke there on Oriana. Forcing him back on that turret. Another bomb lands. He's got to be careful. He's going to flash ignite. That may well be enough. I don't think so. The help bot should save him. And Peke will be safe for one more, but he's going to have to be really careful with these bombs that Link's got ready to throw out. Yeah, he does. He's, the help bot's running, trying to keep him healthy right now. But Link does a great job. He's looks like he wants to go for it here as he's really close to the turret. He's not going to get the hit. Oh, he manages to pull the defensive ball back just in time and land that attack onto Link, but again, Link has oh. to throw another one out! One more! He cannot stick around, surely. He gets enough to get the level up and he's gonna back away. And no one's gonna be there to defend against the turret, so Link, he might just back out as well to get some, uh, oh, some oh, items, oh, oh, but he's oh, expending oh, oh. all of his mana right here, so expect that he could potentially die from one of these auto attacks with Zig's passive, but Sonic, he's he's here, he's coming, and his pings are coming down, so they know what's happening. Yeah, Link's, Link's well aware of that. It's like, if you're sticking around on that health, I'm not stupid, it means Lee Sin is in my vicinity and I'm just going to back away. So Sino's going to take away those rays. Where is Trix? He's in the top lane, he's helping out Nienton so, so he's making sure that they don't get the double push on him. And look at the CS lead we already have for Soaz. 15 in his 1v2 lane compared to the 4 that uh, Nien has. But then again, we obviously saw Sino there to make sure he could get a, quite a few last hits. And it looks like COG gave quite a few over to Trix instead of over to Nien. So a little bit of a trade there. I expect I finally get to back away and Link, he's kind of already made a stamp on, on this lane. He's kind of shown Xpeke that, you know what, I can probably kill you 1v1, so you need to play a little bit passive, and that really hurts an Orianna when you need that AP uh, later on to use that ultimate to really catch people off guard. We'll see what the Tricks is able to do what Cyanide did on Shivana in the last game, and that's just effectively get straight in his face, take some of that jungle, and do as much farming well, as he can. The end tries to poke out, and they just force him back. What's different about this one compared to the last one is that Fnatic's AD carry uh, support lane, they sat back. They didn't try to push really quickly, so you had the other team overcommitted a little bit. But right now, we have Link Cannon towards the top side of Formite Gang potentially coming in right there, but right now, you're seeing Fnatic push very aggressively, so it forces Shivana to visit this top lane, forces him to not be able to counter jungle too much, but Link, he's still committing to this. He's coming from the backside. He's going to be chasing. After a move, Flash Zenith Blade on towards Yellow Star. Is it going to be enough? The Ignite's there. There comes the bombs around the side, and now Reckless is in trouble. He's got a Flash available, has to use it. Barrier is there if he needs it, but he does get away. Yellow Star going down. First blood, CLG, once again. If that didn't work, that would have been so much time committed for CLG up there, but a great job for Right, uh, by Link to just come in last second, but uh, Oriana, Speke, he's pushing mid lane as much as possible. He's trying to really punish Ooh. them for that, but he's not going to get the turret down anytime soon. He's going to get a stun out here, I feel. Will it be enough to take him down? I don't think it will. Double lift. If that Q would have landed from Sinai, that kick would have followed through. But he did manage to get it in there. Now Peke in trouble. Having to use that defensive ball, speeding up. You can see Afromu making that rotation from top to bottom. Does force Peke to go around the river. He's roaming support. I mean, we haven't seen that in a long time, ever since like Alistair. But he visited top, visiting middle, not coming back down bottom, trying to make sure this turret doesn't go down as Fnatic, trying to push it very quickly. But with the recent turret changes, they're not going to take it. No, you can see they're going to just put that damage down on it. Rectus did survive, remember. So neither of AD carries have been back yet. And actually, in terms of farm, they are. Still pretty close despite being in alternate lanes. Reckless is going to go back, not going to get interrupted by Nien. That means Yellow Star will be gifted a little bit of gold. And of course, let's not forget the attack damage, uh, sorry, the attack range of Annie is still very, very long. So those basic attacks can going to hit you from downtown, effectively. Uh, luckily for uh, Nien, though, he does have that door and shield, so it won't do too much, but it definitely is really annoying to go up against. It's really frustrating to constantly be hit oh. over and over, but Yellow Star getting it overextended here. But he does have his yeah. E, so he does have that extra armor, which really can save him. Yeah, would have took that a level 4 and immediately just 
protects himself against the end. It's like, if you want to put tax on me, it's going to hurt you as well. And that will keep him at bay. Picks up a couple of eight CS, actually. He's got a little farming wave there. Where is Reckless? That's the question. He has returned back to lane now, so he's got himself a build you want to cut. There's different builds coming up. Oh, he's going no. to be going in towards that blue buff. Well, he's got to be careful there, Trix. I was like, I wonder if that burnout was going to steal it away. Link does manage to get the blue, though. That would have been terrible for Link in the mid lane, but right now Yellowstar, he's coming down, he's going to spot it here, so he knows it was just taken. Now they know the position where Trix was, and Sanad, he could go for a potential counter gank if they do want to go bottom or something like that, but still a relatively quiet game with CLG picking up that first blood with that four-man gank topside. And even with all that, middle's been, it's been quiet now, ever since Link went for that flash little uh, 1v1. It's been quiet, they're equal on farm, but of course, don't forget, Link has that kill, so he's ahead in gold right now, as well as having that blue buff. Peke is going to be getting himself that blue buff as well, and that will return him back to lane. So really, the big difference so far is Nian and Soaz. They're in the top and bottom lanes at the moment, but it's a 51 to 26 farm differential. And right now, this whole lane swap that we saw happen is going to take a little bit of harass here. It's working out in Fnatic's favor. Look at how far ahead Soaz is compared to Nian. 53 CS to 29, and when a cannon can get rolling a little bit, get a little bit of items, it hurts really bad when the ultimate comes down. And not to mention, Fnatic, they have that top turret very low already at this point. Yeah, and, and CLG have barely took the bottom turret at all because, you know, Soaz has just been clearing out that farm, no problem. The end's been shoved up against it, which is why we see Trix up here once again. I wonder if Link, as he makes his move, is going to come back up here and catch out Reckless this time around. I'm not too sure whether they will. Nope, he's already passing back in there. It's going to be Cyanide down the bottom that takes some damage for a double lift. It's not going to be enough, though. You can see Soaz returning back to the lane. A backup, actually, they have done quite a good bit of damage towards him. Soaz trying to throw out those shurikens, not going to get the stun, not really going to get the one that he wants. Can he get on towards him? He has got his ultimate available, but instead, double lift does step away. And yeah, double did go for cleanse. We wanted to make sure to get out of any of these stuns that really would have locked him down. Perfect idea, especially for Annie and this cannon hole combo here. But Link going to keep farming as much as possible. It looks like Fnatic isn't in a big hurry to take this top turret just yet. They're quite happy with how far ahead wow. they're becoming at this. Uh, yeah, they're, they're quite happy with this because Soaz is still farming away. The turrets are pretty much equal bottom. And Fnatic can take that top turret whenever they want and turn it into a dragon. Yeah, they just keep on pushing it. And, well, Peke wants to farm, and that's what he's going to get. He's getting some free time to farm because Link's been looking for those kills as he should be with that Zix and see if he can start throwing that uh, Mega Infernal Bomb. Uh, long, long range, but as it stands, he's not been able to get close. Just keeps on throwing those explosive packs. Land them with uh, somewhat ease, which is actually impressing me because they're not that easy to land. You can generally side them quite easy. I look at that and I'm just like, wow, I could never hit that many yeah, in a yeah, row. No. Um, but right now, Reckless, going for a different build. Going for a build to cut instead of going into a phase, trying to build towards that Trinity Force. He wants to be able to have that extra speed for the, uh, the potential runaway right now. And still tricks committing so much time into the top, but he's not able to counter jungle like Sinai was doing just prior with the same champion. Yeah, Sinai's been spending a fair bit of time in the bottom, though. He's been looking to try and help out get that kill. He's coming back once again into that bush, so as again tries to bait them towards him, but he is spotted out every time by that ward in the tri bush, so they know exactly his position. We'll see whether Trix goes for any counters. In the end, once again, has to keep them busy at the top. But look at that, it's just a slither of health left on that top lane to it. And you're seeing Trix come up yet again through that mini-map. He's, he's trying to make sure to protect us because he doesn't know exactly what's going to happen when that turret finally does fall. But Speke, he spots Link. Is he going to let him go? Nope. Nope, nope. Just going to stop him right there. And Link's like, laughs as well. He uses spam slash. <laughs> Oh, this is the bottom turret. It's actually taken very low, but it's the top we're looking at. You can see immediately Tibbers has been thrown down there. Can they get enough damage down on towards Trixo? Bottom turret. Meanwhile, Sinai gets on towards Aframu. Double lift does manage to get a return kill on towards Soaz. I'm not too sure he can win this trade. You can see he's going to try and land it. The Colin comes out, has to get away, uses that safeguard onto a minion to escape. Meanwhile, this top lane turret, they have to back away. The turret's going to go down. The question is, will they be able to catch on towards anyone? Yellowstar's got that stun back available, has got flash, but they didn't go for the kill. And a one for one trade right there in the bottom, but right now, is Blue not up just yet, but Link is out of position. He's getting closed in on. Surely they could just go around the back. They are, they're at the blue buff. You can see they're getting ready to go on towards Trix. Meanwhile, we're looking at Peke. He's on towards Link. Trix is now going to get caught out. Trix is in trouble. Trix will be going down in the top lane, but he manages to escape with his ulti. Fnatic, I mean, just like that. We were we were saying how sl uh, slow this game was going, and as we do see Neon chasing Fnatic away, but they just turn on, they realize, all right, well, we can we can probably push this advantage right now. We're 12 minutes in, no dragon taken just yet. Peke has control of middle, as able to push Link out of it. And not to mention bottom lane, Soaz doing a great job right there. But I have to give credit to Neon. He's been able to catch up quite a bit in farm sin at 50 to 66, when he was uh, previously down over 30. So, lots of flashes suddenly burn, lots of ulties suddenly burn, but 
Not a great deal of kills coming out of it. Still 2-1 to CLG. Definitely a much slower paced game. Considering at the 12 minute mark right now, we were looking at early dragons, early towers, and hell, we were getting close to being in CLG's base last time around. For Cyanide though, down this bottom, Troll about trying to get on towards that turret, but it is potentially going to be a dragon start for CLG. This is good moves. And this would be a fight that Fnag would want with the AoE comp that they kind of have right now, but they're not in position. We do see the Ezra ulti spot it, but will Sunny be there to steal it? He's like the best smite stealer in Europe, but he gets caught. Great Zenith Bay coming out. He does throw out that solar flare. Cursive him to back off a little bit. He's still lingering around. He's not going to be able to get that jump in, though. He has done that many times at Worlds, but this time around, not going to happen. Mid turret also going down, so a double win for CLG there. And like not able to pick anything off of that. They're looking for Link right here with Xpeke. He doesn't have his ultimate up just yet, though, so he's going to be able to escape. But would they be able to apply pressure onto a turret here? Bottom turret's already very low. Xpeke taking some damage, and he's still trying to chase Link down. He's actually taking a hell of a beating as well. He's going to throw out that bomb. Has to flash away with the Ignite running. Cyanide taking low, but in comes Soaz around the side. Attack with Dissonance going to go into there. No, Dissonance didn't quite have enough mana to do it. Had to wait for that delay, which didn't manage to get Link down. Cyanide just lingering off the side, throws that ward down. Doesn't have a good enough vision. And Fnatic in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, they're looking at this turret though. It's looking pretty juicy for them. A little bit of extra goal on top of that. And Yellow start playing very aggressive with that huge auto attack range. Looks like Peke will go take his own blue here. So as gonna just scamper along. And he's gonna got the haunting guys because item builds are gonna come into effect very shortly. A close battle for Peke there with the blue, I feel. But uh, the bottom lane there is, is finally facing off one against one another. And actually, despite the fact they've been top and bottom in alternate lanes, they've kept up pretty much even in farm. 124 to 126. That will be swinging in the favor of double lift in just a moment as that wave gets cleared out. But the bottom turret is low. Both of both sides, and it's a case of who is going to get the help from their jungler first. Now take a look at the arm just a little bit more. And Aframu, who... He, he roamed around a little bit. He visited top and he visited middle uh, once or twice. He's actually ahead in levels to Yellowstar. He kind of didn't go for a sight zone just yet, but he's investing so much money into early wards. They want to have that early control right now to stop Fnatic from catching them on the roam, because that's exactly what happened last time, where Fnatic would just pick them off uh, one by one. But he's behind in items. Luckily for him, though, he has the only, he does have that W, and he does have the extra tank is built in with it. But right now, we have Sonic sneaking in here. And I'm looking for this turret. I'm looking for the turret, ready and waiting in the bush. Not too sure whether they saw any of the positioning. And judging by Afro, who almost got face checking into that bush, they realize he's there. But looking around the side, Solar Flare lands on towards Yellowstar. Yellowstar's gonna have to try and get away from this one. Does manage to get out. Tibbers goes down. Yellowstar will be dropped. Double if managed to pick that one up. Reckless, the next focus target. You can see he's gonna have the calling available. Is he gonna go for it on towards Reckless? I don't think he will. Super Mega Inferno bomb thrown out. Peke goes down. Link gets himself another kill. And wow, I mean, CLG, aggression on all fronts, able to go for that two-man dive top lane, three bottom, able to turn that gank around that Sunny was going for. They're going to get a bottom turn off of this. They might even be able to get the top one. And just like that, CLG gained some ground here. Look at the lead they have, four to one, 15 minutes in. But so as trying to respond with the turret here, but there's no way he's going to get that. Well, he's going to get a good chip on towards it. Top turret, though, now may well be the focus. And, you know, Nien needed that. He got two assists off this in the last few times. He's pushed towards it. The bottom lane is going to be the next focus target. So as heads on down there, Trix is ready and waiting. Cyanide comes in as well. They may turn this one back on its head. Trix does get stunned up. He's going to get the kick. Trix will drop down eventually here. So as he's trying to get more targets than one, though, throws out that ultimate, gets stunned up nicely, and that's going to be saving him. Can they get the kill? Cypher guard coming out from Cyanide. Keeps so as just alive. In the meantime, Nian was still top, but he's going to get that turret. Link is middle, still pushing that turret down in two. They're looking for turrets everywhere, dragging Fnatic in every different direction. They get the top one, not going to get the middle one just yet, but here comes Yellowstar. He's looking for a potential kill here on a Link, and Link doesn't have flash yet. Well, Yellowstar's going to keep on chasing, but they're going to have to chase a long, long way here, and Peke's already given up on that one. Yellowstar's going to put out the ward, so... 4-2 in kills, 3-1 in turrets. Fnatic do have a number of turrets in the bottom lane, uh, pretty low. The middle is only about half health, so there's a bit of cash invested in there, but it's still a 3,000 gold lead with that dragon going to be up in around about three minutes' time. COG taking the first one, of course. Can Fnatic have an answer on this middle turret? Yeah, the gold difference is really just inflamed off of these two turret advantage that CLG has, not to mention the Dragon too, but Fnatic, they're, they're sticking for this turret. Pekka taking quite a bit of damage off it, but Trix getting stunned. Another good stun coming out there. A little attack dissonance on towards in the end on, so Dragon will be up in two minutes' time. I believe that's where we're going to see our first 5v5 fights, because both of these teams feel are up for it right now. And in terms of items, Devlift has a full item ahead of Reckless currently. Reckless. That's not too much gold just yet. Looks like he's going for a last whisper. No, actually, they're going for a phase, it looks like. But 
they have an item advantage. I mean, there's an easy large rod ahead for Link. And that fight you're looking for a dragon in two minutes or a minute and a half now, it looks like that's exactly where it's going to go down. So the question is, will they be able to spend that gold, get in there? Because don't forget, Nian is a long way behind as well. He's got those two assists, but as a so as, but he's also got a 40 farm advantage over him. to make that a 30 farm advantage over him now, because here, he's just got a wave picked up here. Peke and Sino back in his mid lane, along with Reckless. They're going to have to defend this middle turret, because that seems to be the next focus target for Fnatic. And Fnatic's middle turret alone is already very low. That You can't afford to lose too many middle turrets because you lose so much control of the map. You've only got a few of them. Well, like, that's also a big problem too, Demon. <laughs> I mean, you only have two of them right there. But, you know, at the top lane, they lost their first outer already. They lost the outer and middle. They lose potentially control of the red side of the map, or the top side of the map, if we do see Ooh. CLG ward it. But right now, Sane might get caught here, but he should be able to escape. He does have safeguards. Zenith blade on him. That's going to be followed by a solar flare, but that's going to be on towards Yellowstar. Has to use Tippers to try and help him escape. Super Mega Inferno bomb thrown out. May have put an extra super in. That's going to be a shockwave catching, but these Fnatic, they're going to have to back up. Oh, Flash Zenith Blade not quite catching on towards Peke. has to flash out of it, and that is a lot of ults is expended with 27 seconds before the Dragon, but CLG are not interested in that. They're going to push on through the mid because they know Reckless is down bottom. This is a roll reverse of what CLG and Fnatic had in game one. Oh, Peke, he's trying to draw them away from being in there on the backside. Yellowstar, he doesn't have his Tivers, he doesn't have Flash, and Peke might get caught. But CLG, a smart move on their part, realizing that, hey, Dragon, just down for another 20 seconds, we get some damage on that middle turret. And they're so tanky right now. I mean, look at Nian. He hasn't been doing well all game in terms of farm. As we do see Link and Nian actually flash in. Flash stun on towards Peke, pulls out the defensive ball. Will it be enough? No, it won't, because Doublelift flashes in and makes sure he secures the kill. That's got to feel good for Doublelift. Actually got chased out at the end of game number one, but the Dragon is available instead of that. With Xpeke being down, they want this middle turret. They're going to gain a lot of gold off this, even Dragon right after. And they have the potential to, well, they have the potential to die, but they're probably not going to do it against Soas, who has his ult available. With him being so low, though, they're gonna, they, they can go for it. Fantastic poke there from, uh, from Link as well. Soas is going to come around the side. There's the stun. Is it going to be enough? No, Yellowstar goes down. The tower goes down. Emergency exit required for Fnatic, but CLG are not allowing it. The culling comes out. Doublelift gets himself a second. Can he get a third? No, Soas flashes oh. out. The bomb from Link will land from downtown. It's 8-2 CLG. And they're going to keep pushing here. They just, this is such a snowball. Once you get that little bit of a, a, an edge and the other team just kind of keeps running into you and dying over and over, you're going to keep pushing. They're going to most likely get inhibitor off this. They have 15 seconds on Sinai. They have 20 on Soaz. And we see Leona going in. Solar Flare comes out, but the Shockwave reverses it. That does mean Peke goes down and Doublelift gets himself another kill. Reckless in trouble. He's trying to back up. He's desperately defending this one. Doesn't have his ultimate available. One more shot would be enough. That's going to be Peke somehow picking up the kill with the tower assists on towards Aframu. Link does get the tower down and they all back it away. CLG though, they're in control of this game. They really are. It, it broke out so quickly, 20 minutes in. 31.4 thousand gold to the 25,000. Dragon's still available right now. And it looks like Fnatic are going to be the ones to take it here. It's already heading down towards it. And CLG, they have a pink ward to spot it and yet they didn't decide to go for it. They didn't want to get into a fight right now when they're already low on health. Is it wise to anger double lift? That's the question, because it seems to happen in game one. They're going aggressive on Link there, forced to back away. They're going to maybe try and pull out the dragon here. They need to get that gold to get snowballing, but 6 0 1 double lift right now. He's got that bloodthirst and static shield. Now he's building up a grim magic resist. CLG, they're not going to give this up. Trix comes in. They force Fnatic to back away. Yeah, all they need to do is just contest it, and then Fnatic either has to back away or potentially lose that middle inhibitor. So as his top in right now, he's not there. He's not able to help. And that means CLG will get a free dragon right now. And if they want, they can barrel down middle. They can barrel down bottom and pick up another turret with some extra free gold. They're so far ahead at this point. Blue buff for Peke, and it's a uh, champion Oriana. Is uh, I just. I just don't like seeing these assassins, the Pekes and the Alex Ichis on Oriana because they are assassins. They're not they're not just farmers. One well, thing about Ori is like she does really well or really bad. Like there's mm. really not a big gray area. You have to get a lot of farm on her, a lot of kills, then your ultimate becomes a shockwave, not a med wave anymore, as we used to call it. And he just doesn't have it just yet. He's, he has a decent amount of farm, but he's been killed three times. They're missing a lot of gold because of turrets. Five to one. They're missing because of dragons as Reckless forced to flash away and they're missing a lot of damage. Even with Soas having that uh, 60 CS lead, 
doesn't have the Zonies yet to stay alive in the middle of a CLG comp. Well, he's a full Rabadon's death cap down. I mean, that, that is a huge differential between him and Link right now. And that is where is one of the big differences. 304 for Link, 601 for Double Lift. And Aframu, honestly, has been landing those Zenith Blades and Solar Flares, just throwing them out at will and managing to find their target every single time. And the thing is, it's not even about hitting it perfectly on a champion. It's about the positional advantage it gives you. Puts it behind him so you can't run away. Exactly. Okay, gonna be able to escape here, but not before taking a lot of damage. And even with the Zenith Blades, he's been just controlling where the enemy goes. And from that, the rest of CLG can make a play off of it. And right now, this is the real question. We always talk about the difference between a good team and a great team is how you can close out a game if you can do it. And CLG, they want this inhibitor, but they're still really hesitant to go for it. I'm sure soon they're going to make something happen here because right now they have the advantage of getting into this area and spreading out. If they get stuck at this choke point, Fnatic is going to win the fight. That's what Fnatic are looking to do. They want to keep them tunneled in there, but CLG not interested in that. They're going to rotate down towards this bottom turret. Yellowstar's the only man that's there with Cyanide coming around and the rest of Fnatic joining him. I think CLG have got positional advantage here. I think they're going to push onto this tower. And the, the, the shove that they have with Link and Double Lift will keep them at distance. And if they get too close, the Solar Flare will land on their heads. Yeah, and the only real wave clear that Fnatic has is in the hands of Xpeka. And he's, I don't think he actually, actually, he does have a blue buff on him, luckily. He even popped a blue pot here just for extra cooldown reduction and damage. So he realizes this is, this is the moment of the game. We need to be able to hold on here. Wow. Okay, now they have to back away. There's nothing oh. they can do. Well, they're going to have to back off. Peke thought he could use that defensive ball to try and take out some of those mines, but no, Link was ready and waited for that one. He's like, you're going to run in my mines, you slowed. It's a perfect target for us. And that's going to be the inner turret on this bottom lane going down. They could keep on shoving here, but they're going to rotate around. They've got that open target in the middle. Look how many wards have been placed across that area. They have full vision of Fnatic as they exit the base. And importantly, they have an Oracle. They could go for Baron. They don't have that many wards on them, but they can bait Fnatic in. Without the inhibitor being down, the chance that Fnatic is going to come out and try to check it or stop that from happening is very high. And that's exactly where CLG can pounce on them. With that Leona stun, you're going to be able to kill someone in a very quick amount of time. But we see the Flash ultimate come out of Afrim, which doesn't hit anything. Well, Reckless and Soaz are off split lanes, so they just went, well, we might as well just keep on pushing the middle. If they're not there, they're not as that full combo. That's the only defense Fnatic has right now, is to land that massive chain wombo combo on CLG. And they're aware of this. They have they a big choke, gold though. advantage, and they're just going to keep on shoving. And well, you know, like you say, they're giving up that choke point. They're just about keeping in there. Trick's actually taken quite low. This may well force CLG back a little. And right now... Nian, so tanky, sitting up there on the front line, trying to absorb any kind of poke that is going to go for the team. You see right there, just blocking for double lift, making sure he can stay healthy because they want to go for this inhibitor. And they're waiting for, it looks like, that next wave of minutes. They're, they're trying to test the water, see if Fnatic is going to try to defend it. If they're going to try to engage, double lift, you know, trying to hit it once or twice, see if they're going to, you know, rush in. And you see the ball on the head of Soaz. You see Yellowstar coming, oh, if he can pull this off. There is a ward to spot him come from the side, but if he can get a flash stun here, this can set up a perfect Fnatic fight. Well, they're ready and waiting to try and land that combo. We've got the ball on Soaz right now. They're going to chase it out. They're, is there going to be any flashes? CLG quickly disengaging, realizing the danger and not having any of it. And you can see how tense this game is. I mean, both teams not wanting to make a mistake because they realize one mistake will cause the other team to get a huge amount of gold or even a win if you're CLG. Or Fnatic can pick up quite a few turrets. We see an Oracle picked up here for Yellowstar. Looks like he wants to be sneaky, but Nian going in on Peke. Solar Flare Peke, he's going to get melted before he gets a chance to even use. The Shockwave went off, but is it going to be enough damage? Nian's taken low, the culling coming out. Nian may well get caught out at the end there, but they don't really have the damage, and everybody backs out. Oh, Zenith Blade was so close to landing on Soaz. The 2C Reckless desperately trying to keep them away, but that's going to be an inhibitor going down. CLG strike back once again. They get two kills and an inhib. And that's something Fnatic that forgot about. Peke flashed last time to get out of the Solar Flare from Aphromoo, who flashed in as well. But the Solar Flare cooldown's so low that they had it up again. They waited for it to come up, then just initiate on Xpeke, who, once he's down, I mean, there goes a huge portion of their damage. Pick up the two kills, pick up the inhibitor, and potentially Baron when they do go back and buy. And Double Lift sitting on 2700 gold. That's not good. And you know what the irony of last game? They focused Double Lift, he smack talked. It was Peke that smack talked in the last game. <laughs> he's now 1 4 0. You've got to be careful what you say against these teams. They will take offense to it, and they will make sure you pay the price in a professional match. They are now, like you say, 9,000 gold in the league. Nien, 
way back in this one. That was the, that was the only real counterpoint that Soaz was so far ahead of Nian, but you could discount that right now. Despite the fact there's a 40 CS difference, he's 007. He is James Bond, ready, looking to kill in that top lane on the Crocodile. Yeah. Meanwhile, he's got 405 Link and a 602 double lift who have incredible amounts of damage in comparison to Peke and Reckless. And even though Nian didn't get a lot of farm early on, he didn't die. Like, that's the key point. He didn't die. He was able to keep his turtle alive for quite a while and is able to stay in the game. And he just put straight tank from here because he does a lot of damage uh, with that Dominus when it does come up. But Fnatic, they're losing control of their jungle. They're losing vision control of Baron. And if you have to face check a bush against a Leona, it's going to be a really bad time. But luckily, they do have that ball. But they can't really check every bush at every point uh -oh. of the game. Sinai caught out, gets caught in the solo flare. He's going to get dropped down, tries to safeguard across, but the bomb will follow him. Link gets himself another kill. Look, I don't they think they're going to go, go the Baron, or will they just keep on pushing those turrets? Peke comes around the side. They could just shove on the top. No, they're going to force it. They lost the jungle. Why not go for Baron? Every single person on CLG can get over walls. Technically, after move actually using the uh, the E to get across the wall, following Sinai. But right now, Baron being started. The thing is, they're in a cope. They're in a tight spot against Peke and so is so alive. They have a lot of AoE. Yellow Star can come out the stun. Baron is not the optimal choice right now, as they could just push this top lane. It looks like it's exactly what they want to do. Well, we've seen a bit, number of people getting drawn into that same situation when they're having a huge, huge advantage. And why go for it? That's the question. CLG realizing it, realizing the danger, and wisely choosing to just take some turrets as that advantage, knowing despite the fact they have the jungler down, there is still some serious danger opposition. They are going to poke away on that turret and just wait for that next wave to come back in and follow it through. CLG. Wait for the ultimate to come up on Leona. I think it's exactly what they're doing again. They realize they probably can't fight. They have almost all the ultimates available. And all they need to do is just one catch. Just one person to go down. And the whole comp for kind of falls apart. Link on Ziggs has been amazing. <laughs> yes. He has not died yet on Ziggs over these past two days. Yeah, he has had some pretty much incredible KDA on that right now. The moment so as well. There we go. Shows himself in the mid. That's going to be CLG start off the Baron. Peke is not there, so is not there. That's going to be an easy Baron pickup for Cyanide. CLG if Cyanide can get in. Nope, caught by the Solar Flare, has to jump away. Caught by the Zenith Blade, he's just off the top of your screen, getting absolutely decimated by Link once again. And I think they realize how good Cyanide is at Smite stealing things away. Not taking a chance right there as you saw Double Up now from his sticky together. They get the Baron, they have the middle inhibitor still down. I think they want to close us out here in the next five minutes. Like this Baron, this is the only Baron they want to get this game to finish it off. 13-3, the kills, a massive gold advantage, 10,000, 6-1 in kills. It's just a complete roll reverse of the previous matchup. That was done and dusted within 24 minutes. Right now, we're only just coming up to the half-hour mark, and it looks like CLG don't want to see that mark indeed. They're going to keep on pushing through. Peke's here, but he's got to be careful. He didn't get caught by one of the Zenith Blades. Throws out the ball, dissonance on towards Afrimu, but really is not doing the damage required at this stage by Orianna. Yeah, he's forced to go into a zone. It's because of the CC and the engage that Afrimu has has instead of that death cap but Trick's taking quite a bit of damage here but he can just wait has the Baron can reach on it all up if that zone is he loses out on so much damage for XPK and also the whole comp for Fnatic I, I want to say they're going to give this turret up but if you give that turret up and the inhibitor the chance of coming back in the game is really really minuscule so they're probably going to have to go for a fight here and you know while it's it's somewhat of a poke strat with with Ziggs and, and uh, Lucian in there it's not really been that that's there's been the difference because they were caught out from the very first lane phase. They just were caught out of position so many times in comparison to the first game. Maybe a little bit of overconfidence set in in, in, in their team comp. I'm seeing something reminiscent of alternate as well. It's pretty much when Soul makes a call, everyone follows right away. When the Aphromoo ultimate comes down, everyone collapses onto that target without a second thought. And that is a scary thing to go up against because all of them having that same mindset, they can pick people off very quickly. This turret not going to last too long here. And Zig Ultimate just used to zone out. Now that's another inhibitor turret going down. CLG driving on through. Flash tippers from Yellow Star. Not going to be enough though. The shockwave and solar flare comes in, but look at the damage coming out from Counter Logic Gaming. They're decimating Fnatic. Simply put, there is not enough damage and gold in the world to prevent Double it picking himself oh. up a double, a triple with the calling. He does have the damage to make it count. And Counter Logic Gaming, where well they strike one back for North America, the first team to actually pick up a victory in one of these semi-finals. North America, you're not out of it yet. CLG, take it to 1-1. And wow, it's such a great style too. I mean, they pulled it off flawlessly just from the get-go and you see Double Lift <laughs> right there is like... 9-0-4 for <laughs> Double Lift. That's a good response, I think it's safe to say. 1-2-13, one should say for Aframu, who 
honestly was instrumental in almost everything that happened for CLG there at Link. Well, he made his own look. 606, those bombs finding the targets. And I've said it before and I will still say it again. Aframu is such a damn good support. He knows when to engage. He knows the moments to go in. And Leona is one of those champions where you can't hesitate when you want to fight. And he did not hesitate once. I should be fair and say Reckless was 1-0-0. He didn't die. Didn't die. He didn't actually die in that, but... He outfarmed double You could say the same thing with Cop. He didn't die a lot, but he weren't in many faults either, so uh, <laughs> maybe that was half the problem. And also maybe why he's on the bench right now. 17-3 was the uh, end score in kills. That's a good response, I think, for game one. Oh, yeah. I mean, considering game one was... It, it became very quickly a stomp. This one wasn't as quick as a stomp, but it was still very one-sided from the get-go, and COG very, being very careful. They didn't want to throw it. They wanted that game three. They wanted a chance to get that victory here and go into the finals against Gambit Gaming. You mentioned Link. I, I just want to point one thing again. 6-0-6, like you said, but the control he had in lane. He pushed mm. Xpeke out right away. I mean, with that flash, uh, auto attack plus the ignite, almost got the kill onto him, and Xpeke had to you know, really respect him. Like, whoa, okay, I need to play a little safe here. He, he had a hard time dodging the bombs, and because of that, Expect he finished one and five. And he answered that question of, you know, if one of your top laners is doing so badly, do you leave him on an island? No, you don't. You go up there. Shivana Tricks was always up there. Mm -hmm. And Link on Six came up and helped out from downtown, getting those kills on Yellow Star, helping him out, which in turn, you know, let, they knew the bottom lane of, of Rush Hour, as it were. <laughs> double Lift and uh, Afro Moo, or Double Moo, or Afro Lift, whatever you want to call it. They they knew they could handle themselves, and that's what they did. You know, yeah. the, the, the stats don't lie. And actually, a 1 1 7 for Tricks on Shivana, he's not a one-trick pony. He's yeah. got a lot more than just Elise. He really he really did a good job of coming back in this game, considering how game one really drew out. Yeah. Where you had Sinai just counter jungling the hell out of him. He couldn't keep up with the speed, and once he kind of lost control of the jungle, it was it was gone forever. But this time, he didn't get counter jungled as much, but he was always in a lane to protect it. He was always top lane to help out, just like you're saying, uh, Nian. And make sure to get a lot of farm, make sure to keep up in levels, which is really key uh, for at least a Shivana, and really become a, a factor later on in the game. Mm, Yen or nine, as he likes to be known while he's in <laughs> Germany. But uh, wow, what a game! And what do, what do we take from this then? I mean, what do we see? Is this is this Fnatic simply getting outpicked, outplayed in lane? I think in it was outplayed in game one. I think it was outplayed. I, I'm sure though, Krepo can probably fill some a little bit more about that uh, since he will be doing analysis on this. But still, you gotta give him credit. Yeah, well absolutely. Done. So let's see what Krepo has to say. He's standing by with Jocks to take us through the two games so far.